this is a response to a thing I just saw about UFOs on YouTube. Uh, I'm Joe. I live in Birmingham. I'm a pretty average guy. You know, I'm a retired commercial artist. Uh, anyway, when I was a kid, about nine years old, Mom and Dad were in the house, and they were uh, in the kitchen playing poker, and I'd walked into their uh, bedroom and shut the door, and there standing beside my bed, I'm not lying, was this little man. He was about, well, I was nine years old, and he was about the same height I was. He was grayish colored, standing right by the window, and that's kind of what he looked like. He had on uh, a suit that looked like it was made out of tin foil. And right there around his collar was some kind of Egyptian looking like this, uh, inscription on his collar. I scared him and he scared me too. His, when, I, when I walked into the room he was just standing there and his eyes were jet black. There were no white in his eyes at all. And he, he, he done like, kind of like that. It, like I frightened but he scared the crap out of me. And uh, that's what he was dressed like. But he had a silver uniform on. And I remember the writing on his uh, collar. It was a pinkish, greenish, kind of gray color. And he smelled terrible. He smelled like sulfur. You know, like uh, just a rotten egg-like smell. It, it scared the crap out of me. So anyway, I ran as hard as I could into the kitchen. And Mom and Daddy were still in their kitchen playing cards. And uh, they didn't think anything about it. And the next morning, I woke up and said, Mama, what was that? What was that? I thought, she, oh, don't worry about it. It's just It was me dressed up. It couldn't have been her dressed up because they were still in the kitchen playing cards. All right, later on, I started having these strange dreams and stuff about aliens. And they were all different kinds of them. They were, uh, some of them were real tall and blonde-headed with big uh, greenish-blue eyes. And others looked almost a little short and squatty, like Oriental people, kind of Asian looking. And then some of them had these frog-like faces. And they were holding these tablets. And this was when I was nine years old when I had these dreams. They had iPads in my dream. And they had maps on these iPads, but they were clear. You could see right through them. And they were touching them. And the maps were moving around. This was when I was nine years old I saw this. Also saw, uh, had dreams about... Uh, helicopters up in the sky, all these black helicopters, and these aliens were walking all over the place. They were Japanese, uh, looked like Chinese, like soldiers coming out of the sky. And uh, these are the crafts. That is what I saw in Arizona. And uh, about two o'clock in the morning, coming home from a fishing trip, we went to the river quite often. This craft here. It was kind of silver. It had all these different colored lights coming out from the bottom of it that were different, uh, various different colors, just fluorescent looking, sparkly colors. This thing was huge. It was out in the country in the middle of nowhere near the Black Warrior River. Uh, later on, we had gone camping, and we were sitting in this old logging cabin, and there was nothing in there but... Uh, Water that came out of the river, you couldn't drink it, but it's okay to wash dishes and stuff in. And we had a kerosene lantern. And all of a sudden, man, it got real quiet outside. And it was so dark, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And this big, bright light come over the cabin. I mean, you couldn't even hardly look out the window. And my friend said, let's go out and look at it. And I said, no, man, I'm not going out there. I'm scared to death. Anyway, you know, it stayed there for a long time. We thought it was maybe helicopters or something or somebody going to... I mean, we wasn't really doing anything but drinking a couple of beers. We weren't drunk at all. We had brought like a, uh, maybe a 12-pack and about four or five of us guys playing cards, you know. And it was so dark outside, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. That light stayed there for a long time. The next morning, I woke up, and I had been sitting at the card table... At the very end of the table, I remember, because I always sat at the same place. That morning, I woke up. I was sick as a dog. But I was laying on the floor on the other side of the room, just propped up against the wall. I don't remember what else happened. My buddies experienced the same thing. They're all dead now. And my, my twin brother was there with me, and he remembers exactly the same thing. 
But we were sick as a dog. We were all definitely sick. Uh, a few months later, my father, now he was straight laced. I mean, he was, you know, Mr. Businessman, suit and tie. He was going to work, and it was just about daylight. It hadn't even been daylight. It was still about 5 o'clock in the morning. And he said this big silver ship just lit up the whole road. It was in front of him. It had these windows that went all the way around this craft and these bright colored lights coming out of it, exactly like the ones that I had seen on my way home from the river that night. He said he, when he got to work, he was scared to tell anybody because they might think he was crazy or something. But uh, one of the boys at work said, well, uh, Mr. Joe, I'm glad you did say something because I saw the same thing. And uh, the very next morning, after, you know, the, uh, the next day, on the next morning, there was a small article in the Birmingham newspaper about this thing that had been spotted in uh, Bessemer, Alabama. And the story doesn't stop there. You know, later on, uh, during the years, you know, I'd traveled to a bunch of different places, and I was going to uh, Arizona, where I was going to tend to a, a wolf farm. A lady raised wolves, and she was a lawyer, and was going out of town for a little while. And on my bus trip there, there was a little blonde-headed lady. I don't know, I was just attracted to her for some reason or another. Just, you know, just like, I felt like I'd known her forever. And she came down and sat down beside me on the bus and looked at me and said, I know you. I said, yeah, you look familiar to me too, where I know you from. She said, we were, we have been abducted together. That you and I have been abducted together. And then she started telling me about my dreams, about the people in my dreams, the spacecraft I had seen. Uh, she described the aliens to a T, said that we had not been together many, many times. Uh, you know, and I wanted to keep in touch with her, but she was scared to give me her phone number. She was, uh, but it freaked me out. You know, I had met this lady, and she explained my dreams to me. Well, I'm an artist. You know, I, I do a lot of drawing and stuff. Like I said, I was a commercial artist. And I had drawn a lot of these uh, spacecraft and uh, things I had seen in my dreams. Well, I got together with other artists, and they had drawn exactly the same things. You know, and they had had some of the same dreams. And some of the dreams I had were about the uh, Native Americans and uh, these big baskets that came out of the sky that had people in them, and they taught the uh, Indians how to make tools and stuff. But they had, like, these chicken looking like heads, and but they had human-like bodies, and they were teaching... The Indians had to make weapons and spears and things like that to hunt with and because they had all been growing vegetables. But anyway, one of the Native Americans had tried to kidnap one of those uh, alien girls. And uh, when they did, all these people lived uh, under these, uh, underground, all these uh, alien night people lived under the ground, but they'd come out and help the Indians. And when that Indian tried to rape that uh, lady from the other world that came out of the flying basket well they had killed everybody in the tribe and they took off in the baskets again and that's how they got introduced to spears and stuff that was my dream and uh, later on I found out that it was an American Indian story that had been told that was very similar to that now I don't know what's going on out there you know I don't dwell upon UFOs and things like that I live a pretty straight life you know I go to church, you know, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs or drink or anything like that, you know. I'm pretty much a homebody, but I know what I saw, uh, you know, and other people have told me they had seen exactly the same thing, so it makes you wonder, you know, are we alone? Looks like America's most wanted. But uh, seeing videos of, of this little guy on YouTube, some of them are for real. You know, you think you're all fake. Uh, -uh. uh There's more to this than uh, to meets the eye. So that's all I got to say. That was just my video response to uh, what I saw. Uh, God bless. Have a good day and sleep tight.